closed captioning brought to you by TheraWorks Relief. Prevent and relieve muscle cramps. If you're suffering from muscle cramps or muscle spasms, you need to try TheraWorks Relief. I have patients tell me every day that TheraWorks Relief works. Get TheraWorks Relief today in stores everywhere. Top news. This is CNN Breaking News. Hello and welcome to all of our viewers here in the United States and all around the world. I'm Robin Kerner. I want to give you this breaking news that has just come out of Washington. The U.S. President Donald Trump has just tweeted that he has tested positive for COVID. I'm going to read it. Uh, tonight, Flotus and I tested positive for COVID-19. He wrote in just the last few moments, we will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together, together written in capital letters. This, of course, comes after Hope Hicks, the president's closest aide, tested positive in the last 24 hours. We understand that she is showing symptoms uh, and we will continue to monitor her uh, progress. But it clearly now, all eyes, the focus on the US President Donald Trump has tested positive for COVID. I want to go straight to our doctor, Dr. Anne Ramoyne, uh, to talk us through uh, this news and, and the impact this will have, uh, particularly on a man of his age, his weight, what kind of risk is he at now? Well, Robin, this is a this is a, a stunning announcement tonight, and we're all very concerned about having anyone test positive for COVID, but in particular, the President of the United States and the First Lady of the United States. Definitely. This just shows how important testing, tracing, uh, quarantining, and isolating is exactly. here. The President does fall into a high-risk category. He's older. He uh, is somewhat overweight. Uh, I don't know about any any other uh, pre-existing conditions that he may or may not have. But the important thing is that he is in an age group that does have that does carry risk for severe uh, COVID. So this is very concerning. And doctor, are we showing pictures of um, the key White House team going into Marine One, then into Air Force One? The president there. Um, either following them or leading them. But in the last 48 hours, the last few days, they have all shared a lot of intimate space ever since that debate and uh, rallies and conversations and meetings and fundraisers uh, during that time. Uh, how, when you look at those pictures as a doctor, how concerned were you that, that they were exposing this? Very. So this was playing Russian roulette in, in many ways with the virus. Pinball, none cha -cha, masks, by yellow. And none of them are social distancing. This is very concerning, and this has been the issue all along. They, all of the public health experts, including those people close to Donald Trump, uh, all on the, on the White House task force, uh, the, the CDC, Dr. Fauci, have all said how important it is to wear a mask, how important social distancing is, and how critical it is to be able to stop the spread of the virus. And unfortunately, the Trump team has not done a good job of doing this or setting an example. And therefore, the number of people that could potentially be exposed and at risk of contracting this virus is significant here. Yes. And, and what are the next steps now? National you, security as a doctor threat. and also, now. I suppose, with CDC guidelines, quarantine for how long now? 14 days. CDC guidelines suggest that anybody who has been exposed to a case of COVID should quarantine for 14 days. And it's really important to understand quarantining for 14 days is because this you can be infected on average anytime between 48 hours post-exposure up to 14 days. And so therefore quarantining for 14 days is critical. What has to happen now is that anybody that, uh, that the president, the first lazy, um, Hope Hicks, anybody else that has uh, tested positive, uh, anybody that's been in contact with them for within okay. six feet for more than 15 minutes yes. must quarantine. That okay. is the, the, what CDC suggests. Exactly. Dr. Anne Ramon, thank you very much for joining us with this breaking news. I'm going to go to my colleague now, Don Lemon, who has been following this in the last few hours. Don Lemon, hi. Um, oh, thank you, Don. You Welcome you back. Uh, Robin, Stunning thank you. you. Yeah, it is stunning news. Robin Kernow, thank you very much. We appreciate you. your coverage. And you're absolutely right. It is stunning news. The president of the United States now confirming to the world that he and the first lady of the, of the United States have both 
tested positive for the coronavirus and they will quarantine. The president tweeting out just moments ago here in the United States, 12.54 a.m., said tonight at FLOTUS and I, uh, and I tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. Again, the president of the United States confirming via Twitter that he is now tested positive for COVID-19 and the first lady as well. We have been on the air this evening here on CNN uh, since about 9.45 uh, reporting about the president. Yeah. The president uh, confirming the news that was first reported uh, by Bloomberg, uh, by Bloomberg Network, that the president of the United States had come in contact uh, with Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks, who is his uh, top, one of his top aides, closest aides, testing positive for coronavirus. After she tested positive, the president uh, and the first lady uh, got their tests and they were awaiting it. The president gave an interview to Fox News tonight, explaining that to Fox News viewers uh, that he was awaiting test results, he and the first lady, and that they would quarantine. Uh, I want to bring in um, now Samantha Vinograd, uh, who is our national security correspondent, and also Brian Selter uh, joins us as well. Um, so, Sam, listen, the news we're getting now from the president, you have said uh, that this was um, a, how did you put it, a red alert uh, for the administration when it comes uh, to uh, what could happen. And now I think our worst fears, and I'm yeah, sure the president's- the chickens have come out to roost. Have been realized. Don, I said hours ago that this was a code red moment for the U.S. government before we even had these diagnoses from FLOTUS and POTUS. At this point, knowing that the president is sick and that the pandemic is uh, affecting personnel in the White House, this may be the most dangerous moment that the U.S. government has ever faced. Yes. The president is suffering from a deadly virus. This feels like something we should be watching on an episode of Homeland. The president of the United States is suffering from a deadly virus. He has to quarantine. He is not able to fully perform his, his duties as commander in chief. Based upon the number of personnel that he comes into contact with every single day without wearing a mask, it is logical that other senior personnel within the national security apparatus could be infected by this virus at minimum they will also be unable to fully perform their duties. The U.S. government is incredibly vulnerable at this moment. We do not have a full team on deck, and that means that there are major gaps in our national security coverage based upon this diagnosis. Yes. Mm. So what are the risks here? What happens? Because as what, uh, what has been reported tonight is that, I'm trying to get the information here, because in full transparency, um, we had just gotten off the air when this uh, when Broke. this news came across uh, Twitter, by the way, that the, the president and the first lady uh, had tested positive for uh, coronavirus. This is what I'm learning, Sam, that the vice president was not in close contact with Hicks, uh, but he was in the Oval Office on Tuesday, meaning that he is he was now in close contact uh, with the president of the United States, who is now positive for coronavirus. The, the president is going to have to quarantine. I would assume that there some of the work uh, would have to be handed to the vice president of the United States. Yes. But if the vice president of the United States has to quarantine as well, then that would probably go to the Speaker of the House. Who knows what happens at this moment? Can you walk us through this? Is there a precedent for this? Well, sure. The immediate task is twofold. Number one, Don, the president of the United States may be super spreader number one at this juncture based upon the number of people that he comes into contact with, before we even get to con continuity or simultaneous to that, personnel have to track who he came into contact with to try to stop the outbreak within the top tiers of the US government. Simultaneous to that, there is, as you mentioned, a continuity plan that is in place. Every administration puts together one of those continuity plans, does scenario planning uh, such that if infection does cripple the top tiers of U.S. government, there is a continuity plan in place. But Don, I don't have great faith that this administration has do. done any scenario planning. At this point, it is unclear to me that the president and his team have done just the basic homework to try to figure out what to do if the president of the United States is unable to fully perform his duties. This is an unprecedented situation based upon the infection 
and based upon the White House's lack of preparedness I in need, this situation. I think it's a matter I need of both of you to stand by, um, Sam and Brian. I want to bring in our White House correspondent, Caitlin Collins. Uh, Caitlin, uh, the breaking news tonight uh, is that the President of the United States and the First Lady have both, both tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, the president releasing the information via Twitter just Twitter just moments ago, saying tonight, uh, the FLOTUS and I tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process mm -hmm. immediately. We will get through this together. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, are you getting anything from the White House, from the administration? What are you hearing? Yeah, we are, Don. This is a nightmare scenario for the West Wing. 32 days before Donald Trump is up for re-election, he and the First Lady have now tested positive for coronavirus. And we just got a memo from the president's physician that the White House just released. I haven't even read it yet, so I'm just going to read it to you as I am going through it for the first time. It's from the White House doctor, Dr. Sean Conley. You remember him. We've heard from him before as he's gone over the president's health. And he says, I released the following information with the permission of President Trump and First Lady Melania. Trump. He says, this evening I received confirmation that both President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have tested positive for coronavirus. He says they are both well at this time and they plan to remain at home within the White House during their convalescence. He does not specify a time there, Dom. He says, the White House medical team and I will maintain a vigilant watch, and I appreciate the support provided by some of the country's greatest medical professionals. He says, rest assured, I expect the president can, to continue carrying out his duties without disruption while recovering, and I will keep you updated on future developments. Don, it's that last line that's going to raise some questions on what exactly uh, this means for the president. If he's going to be in quarantine in the residence for the next two weeks, which is what the par for the course is, how does that affect how he's doing his job? Because Dr. Sean Conley says he's going to continue performing the duties yeah. of the office. I assume that means there's not going to be any kind of transfer of power situation going on. Crazy. But the day-to-day -day in the West Wing is not going to be realistic, not given normal. that the president is positive for this highly contagious disease. So there are going to be so many questions raised, and also questions raised, on about what the president did today and yesterday and about those people he was around because he attended an indoor fundraiser today and hours later has tested positive for coronavirus. He was not wearing a mask at that fundraiser and now he has coronavirus. He was around thousands of people at this rally outdoors last night, but still in pretty close proximity to these people in this crowded area. This is going to raise so many questions, Don, but I cannot stress enough, this is a nightmare scenario for the White House, and we had a suspicion this was in the making because they had been so quiet about what his diagnosis like was, ago. and it had taken so long for us Not to get these long. results that something seemed to be up because they have that 15-minute test, and of course now we know exactly there you go. Bingo. what it was that was going and on. Caitlin. Caitlin, listen, Thank I, you for me the I want to read the tweet and I want you to read this. Is, you said it's uh, uh, Sean Connolly, Dr. Sean Connolly. I want you to read the entire statement because I think it's important for our viewers here in the United States mm -hmm. and around the world who are watching. First of all, this is how we learned, Caitlin, uh, of the, the president and the first lady's uh, positive testing for the coronavirus. It says, tonight, FLOTUS and I tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. That was the first official word that we got that the president and the first lady had tested positive. And then Caitlin, you got a response sent out to you and the media from the president's doctor. What, what, what is that statement saying? Yeah, so that's this memorandum from Dr. Conley. And so he says that they're going to be quarantining during their convalescence. It does not say how long the two of them are going to be quarantining, but obviously we're gonna assume that means the president's trip to Orlando tomorrow is off. But then it does say at the end, rest assured, I expect, expect the president to continue carrying out his duties without disruption while recovering. Don, we, it is going to be really interesting to see what the president does because 32 days from today is November 3rd. That is the election. The president had Bingo. two weeks of campaigning on his he schedule. Obviously, it is critical because he is down in the polls. So the question of whether or not he's going to, going to be sitting at the White House is something that they are going to have to deal with because this is something that is very unlike how the president has he's reacted to hospital. things in the past. Of course, now that he's Maybe not. tested positive, it completely changes the calculation of everything. And it raises questions and about how smart it was for the White House to no mask this, policy. these measures that medical experts have the said mask. to take so you do not have 
coronavirus spread happening to the wind, not wearing a mask, not social distancing, not taking any of these measures. And we have seen Seriously that enough. this ended up in the worst the case scenario for the White House with an aide testing positive and the president and the first lady now also testing positive. And, but there were, as you said, as you, as you mentioned, there were other people who were in close contact with the president of the United States. Exactly, also, Don. Uh, with Hope Hicks a, a, as well. So listen, I, I just want to know if um, what happens is Dr. Connolly saying, so the president is going to quarantine for 14 days. Is he going to stay in quarantine? Is he going to, is he, is he saying that he's going to continue to do the business uh, of the American people while he is in quarantine? And Caitlin, we don't know for now what happens with